Hello everybody and thank you for joining me on this inaugural episode of a show I'm calling High on Rugs where I'll be making all sorts of fun rugs. This is my third time and I thought I would make a video of it. This is my studio, also known as my garage. Very minimal setup at the moment. I'm starting off by just showing you my measurements of my frame which is about three feet wide and three feet tall at which point I'll grab my tufting cloth, lay it out, and I'm measuring about 3 feet 3 inches just so I have a little overhang because in my previous two attempts uh, I had a lot of fraying and I think that was because I didn't have enough overhang. So still very much learning, but I'm just marking out my measurements and I'm just showing you a diagonal from both ways to show you that it's pretty much square, which is what I'm looking for. And then I grabbed a level just to get myself a nice straight line to mark out where I'm going to cut. And voila, we have square cloth. And here I am just hanging it up, pulling it tight, getting it nice and tight like a drum. I've learned that the tighter the better. The first one I did I had it pretty loose and uh, it did not work out so well. So you can see me there just tightening it up. And there we have our fabric stretched on our frame. Now I've got my projector and a very slow laptop, but it does the job. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the image I'm going to do and get to drawing. Since Halloween is right around the corner, I thought I'd do something a little spooky. And we're doing Ghostface from Scream. So just getting the general outline going on. See I'm just tracing around all the hard edges, just so I know exactly where my lines are going to be. And there I'm just tracing out the shading, where I'll put some gray for a little bit of shadow. And that's pretty much all there is to the drawing process. It's a pretty simple design overall. You can see me leaning back and giving the chair the swivel of approval. And I was kind of uh, just trying to figure out where I wanted to end it, so I went with that line I was just pointing out. I've got my yarn getting away from me. And I'm going to pull it up and bring it through the little eyelets just as a nice little guide so it doesn't get tangled or pull out of the gun too often. It still happens to me, but like I said, very new to this, still learning. And here I'm starting my outline, which is probably my favorite part of the whole process. I've always enjoyed drawing more than coloring for the most part, so, so I guess that carries over to rug tufting as well. I got into this because I saw a few videos of other people doing it, and in my past uh, artistic endeavors I've always been told that I have good clean lines, and you'll see throughout this video that so far that may not entirely be the case, but still getting used to the gun, working with all the different things that I'm not used to working with, but it's coming along, doing short little bursts on the curved lines to try to keep them as clean as possible. Just coming around the top of the head, working out the mouth. Those tight little areas like the nose are pretty hard to do, in my experience, just to get the shape right. So it tends to blow out pretty good on the other side, but that can all be salvaged during the shaving and trimming process. There you can see from the other side, I'm pushing the gun through and just doing straight lines up and down. Now I'm just filling it in, which is not my favorite part, because it's just very tedious and time-consuming. Kind of jumping around a little bit, but slowly filling in all the black. I like to go one color at a time, which just makes sense, since I already have that yarn out ready to go in the gun. You don't want to pull it out and have to restrain a whole new color, jumping back and forth. Slowly filling in. Now there is a few mistakes I made throughout this process, like I said it's only my third time doing this, but I definitely should have gotten my black lines a little closer to each other. I was just being more conservative than my last two times, because I pretty much had only today, just one day to get this rug done, because it's my only day off from work, so I was trying to do it all quickly. And that's the very last line of filling in all the black. As you can see, I did not fill in the eyes and the mouth there. I pulled out all my black yarn and then I realized that I still needed it. And here I am making my biggest mistake. I thought maybe I could uh, 
tune it up a little bit with the shaver before I continued on with other colors. But I flew a little too close to the sun and I cut a big hole as you can see there. And unfortunately I couldn't really tuck the gray into the knife around where it tore. So that's the biggest flaw that I ran into. But I tried to save it and sprayed some spray adhesive over the hole and just kind of stuck some yarn to it, which I know is not uh, great, but I didn't want, I mean, that's the only thing I could really think of to do. And I didn't want to have to throw the whole thing away or start over because I quite simply did not have the time. And I wanted to start making videos. So learning as I go and showing my mistakes because that's all just part of the process. And now I've got the black done, the gray done, and now I'm just finishing the white. Now on the picture that I was referencing, his knife is covered in blood, but just quite simply I did not have any red yarn. And I'm sure YouTube would appreciate the uh, lack of blood anyways. So that's everything all done, I'm just kind of pointing out where I sprayed the adhesive over, trying to patch it up just a little bit. Here's the other side, just some scraggly bits. It doesn't look too great, but like I said, I didn't want to throw the whole thing away. And off camera, I just went and added an orange background to give it a rectangular sort of welcome mat kind of shape. I think it looks nice, and it brings out more of the Halloween aesthetic with the orange and the black. And now I'm just getting out my carpet adhesive and showing off my putty knife. And it's time to glue the back trying not to make a mess because every time I've done this before I end up dripping a bunch on the floor and it's not the worst thing in the world to clean up but still I'd rather not make a mess. And now that the back is all glued it's time to wait till it dries a bit and we can cut it out of the frame and start gluing the edges and the backing on. A couple hours later I've left the glue to dry for a little bit I'm just starting to trim the edges after I've cut it out of the frame and I'm just kind of trimming every few inches just to give myself some bite-sized pieces that I can then start to hot glue and glue down and I'm sort of pulling them over just a little bit further so it rolls the edge and gives it a nice waterfall effect so you don't really see too much of the tufting cloth around the sides and all that. So yeah, just applying a few little strips of hot glue, patting it down, making sure it has nice purchase making sure it has a nice bite and go all the way around this part is a little tedious but needs to be done to make things look nice and somewhat professional and now that it's all glued I'm just walking over to grab the rug and throw it down on the dirty garage floor it's the best surface I have to work with at the moment and I'm stretching out my anti-slip mat material that I'm going to use for the backing. And I kind of just lay it over my rug to get a general outline of how big I need to cut it. And I trim it out in just a, a rough manner. And then I bring it over to a higher surface where I can get a little more dexterous and trim it down to a better size. Hone it a little bit, if you will. So there it is all trimmed up the appropriate size. As you can see there's a little bit of material hanging over. And now it's time for the gluing process. And it's stuck to the uh, carpet adhesive a little bit so I'm just peeling it away and then I'm using my spray adhesive being very careful not to get it on the edges. And I'm just giving it a nice thick coating on both the back of the rug and the back of the anti-slip fabric. And I'm just doing one side at a time, patting it down. And it's funny because the when it comes out of the can it's super cold so when I'm patting it down it just feels very cold on my hands and now I'm doing the other side same thing just getting a nice thick coating and patting it down making sure everything bonds down nicely and nothing will peel up later and now it's time for the trimming I'm just showing myself kinda of going along the edges I just bought after I finished recording all this a couple nice pairs of scissors so I can really get into in between the lines and the edges and make everything look a lot more neat in the future. For now all I have is these uh, trimming shears. And that is all the trimming done and we are looking at a finished rug. Now as you can see out towards the bottom I didn't quite put my lines as thick as I should. There are some bald spots here and there that you can kind of see in certain lights. 
and you can see where I patched the hole I made with the knife, so there's definitely some flaws, but overall I'd say it looks pretty spooky, pretty fun. And that is how you make a ghost face from Scream rug. So I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, I'm still new to this, I'm still learning, but if you would like to come with me on my journey of getting better at this, feel free to subscribe, and thank you for watching.